Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode number 35 of the Zoomer Sports Radio, and we have a big show today. We got a lot of stuff on the tap. As always, I'm your host, Andrew Moody, and on the tap today, we're going to talk about how, we got to talk about how the struggling Cubs are, looking pathetic. I mean, not as pathetic as the Yankees, but it's disgusting how they are underachieving this only 14, two weeks into the season, 14 days. It's pathetic. Kyle Hendricks getting absolutely just busted on national television two nights ago on Sunday Night Baseball by the Braves. Just pathetic. We're going to talk about the... Uh, we're not. I'm not a big soccer guy, but i got to get into the Super League here with uh, this whole European Super League for soccer. I gotta, and then shout out to our European listeners. We got, a, we got a bunch of in here. We got Ireland, England... Belgium, Germany, so you guys are definitely going to be interested in that. We're going to go down that. Topic three I got, we got Illinois basketball. A lot of big stuff uh, heating up down in Champaign. Obviously, I got the jerseys behind me. We'll get into that a little later in the show. As I know, a lot of my listeners do enjoy the Illinois basketball. Topic four, I will touch on the Masters that happen. And then if we have time, we'll run some little NFL draft that's a week away. But, I mean, you guys might be wondering... Why I haven't posted a podcast or anything in the last two months? Obviously, I'm still active on the TikTok, and we've done we've done a couple live streams. Our last live stream was the Illinois Loyola game. I kind of checked out after March Madness. I kind of checked out of March Madness and college basketball after that blowing defeat. If you saw that live stream or you were watching during then, you could tell it was I I completely lost it. Go check that out. I'll link that in the description of the YouTube video. And Spotify, same thing with the Spotify and Apple Podcast. This is episode 35. Haven't posted since our post Super Bowl episode. The reasons why is uh, I've gotten busy with uh, my baseball season, and this is one of the first uh, truly off days I've practiced today, but one of the truly first off days I have in a while. So I'm like, I got to rip out a podcast. With that saying, no guest. We do have a couple guests. As I mentioned, Stephen Bardo will be coming on, Deion Thomas, too. Illini basketball players, former Deion Thomas was a standout. He's got his number up in the rafters, just like Mr. Desumu will have. Stephen Bardo, great analysis. Big Ten Network, Fox Sports, he will be coming on. And then, I'm not going to leak the name, but we might be having a former MLB All-Star on. So stay tuned. I've been, I've been talking to his camp. And so no Pat today, just me. going to ramble on here. But I apologize for anyone. I, I've noticed on my TikTok, which... We've been growing really fast. We're almost up to 7K followers there. Uh, Where's the podcast, Andrew? Where's the podcast? Well, it's here now, and I'm delivering it. Let's get into it. All right. So, yeah, my apologies there for the Spotify and Apple Podcast listeners, YouTube. We're back. I'm going to try to get rolling with this stuff. I want to get... I've missed doing podcasts. Just haven't had the time. There was just a whole bunch of things with guests. Bardo was supposed to come on before the tournament, and... There was a little mix-up where he was in Indianapolis for the call of the Big Ten tournament. We got that all settled. He'll, we'll have him coming on a later date. But anyway, let's get into it. First of all, this news struck. This is old news, but this news is still, it's still on my nerve to this day. Is that the Ricketts are, I don't know. Anthony Rizzo only gets a, offered a five-year, $75 million extension. What is Jed Hoyer doing? Is like, did he need Theo Epstein to hold his hand? Or what is Jed? Why aren't we signing Rizzo? Rizzo has done more for this franchise than any other individual in this entire into this entire franchise's history. Okay, you could argue Mr. Banks or Ernie Banks, Mr. Cub. He won two MVPs. How many post zero postseason appearances? Theo Epstein, you could argue he built this team, but Anthony Rizzo as a player. I think maybe you could argue Ernie Banks, Ryan Sandberg, Greg Maddox. I don't think you can argue Billy, even though Billy's Hall of- Billy and Fergie are Hall of Famers, but I don't think you can argue them. Santo could be, just with how great he was off the field. Uh, type 1 diabetic, but big awareness there. And who's in the radio booth, but I think Rizzo, if you look at the just players-wise, has contributed most to this Cubs organization. One, Survived cancer. He's a big Anthony Rizzo Foundation, big in the Chicago community. Two, he was here when the Cubs 
were on the dumpsters. They were in the cellar of the NL Central. He came here in 2012 when... 2012, they lost 100 games, I believe. It was 96 or 100. I'll look up the 2012 Cubs record here. And he's he was there for... The, yeah, 61 to 101. They lost 100 games his first year as a Cub. I remember he was he was the big thing. He was he was the him and Starlin Castro were the reasons Cubs fans would go on get on the L, get on the Metro, go down to Wrigley Field, turn on WGN nine or Comcast Sportsnet was to watch him and Starlin Castro play. Obviously Castro is traded after the twenty fifteen season. Rizzo, he's that team captain. I remember before that twenty fifteen season, he came out and everyone was like, Whoa, like stay in your lane, Rizzo. Rizzo said the Cubs were gonna win the NL Central. Obviously, they, they they fell short a little bit of that, but they won 97 games. That would win most divisions. The NL Central was the best division that baseball that year. They won 97 games. That won't win you the division 90% of the time. And then they went and beat the Pirates in the wild card game. Kyle Schwarber, who who hit a bomb for Washington. I Schwarber, I mean, it was it's just it just felt weird seeing him celebrate like that in the Nationals uniform. Like that was our guy. That. Kyle Schwarber was like this big holy. People were comparing him to Babe Ruth before the season, or after that 2015 season, which is obviously absurd. But it's just he was our guy, and he just didn't come through. I mean, obviously the torn ACL, but he was our guy. And then Arietta, Jake the Snake, coming up clutch. He got hit that game. We absolutely pounced on Garrett Cole as Schwarber hit his into the Allegheny. Wow, if tides turned, Garrett Cole's one of the best pitchers in the game now. And we went and we rooted the Cardinals at home. That was probably the third loudest Wrigley was has ever been. I say the only two times ahead is when they won the pennant and Miguel Montero's grand slam in game game one of the 2016 NLCS. I think were the only two moments louder at Wrigley Field in history. But the 2015, we were like, the Cubs are back. We haven't we haven't won a postseason series since 03, the Bartman year. We're back. The Cubs are back. We got this strong young core of Bryant, Baez, Rizzo, Russell. Contreras wasn't even in the picture yet. Soler was there. And so we're, we're hyped. Castro was still in the equation there. He was one of the veterans on the team along with... We had John Lester just signed with us. Miguel Montero, David Ross, Dexter Fowler, of course. You go, we go. And that's what the Cubs have really been missing is a certified leadoff hitter. Doesn't need to be Dexter Fowler. Like, if we could have a Whit Merrifield, I think we could be a legit team. A, a Whit Merrifield on our team leading off for us. His career is riding down in Kansas City because the can the Royals aren't going to be competitive anytime soon. Anytime soon. But back to Rizzo. He that he caught the final out for us in our World Series. Pay the man. Like, it's just it's just frustrating. I'm, I'm sure it's way more frustrating for Rizzo, but it's just frustrating as a Cubs fan that that is the heart and soul of Chicago. He's the guy with the C on his chest. He's our captain. He's been that since 2012. That's that's our soldier out there on the battlefield. That And it's just sad they won't pay him. Like They offered him almost half of what Goldschmidt's getting in St. Louis. is getting 130, 135, I believe. Rizzo needed to be in that range. Rizzo, you could still argue he was a top five first baseman. You know, obviously, you got Pete Alonso, Luke Voigt, Freddie Freeman. You put Matt, argue Matt Olson. I'm definitely Paul Goldschmidt. I'm definitely missing a couple there, but he's still arguably a top five first baseman in the league. No one will disagree with that. Arguably, he's a top five. Is he a top five? We'll have to see. Obviously, he's a little slow start, but he did hit two two, two homers. He went deep twice against Atlanta. But we gave up four homers in that first inning, so didn't even matter there. And but so just they need to extend Rizzo. Nothing has angered me more as a Cubs fan than not extending Rizzo. Riz, it's just a shame. All right, and then moving on, the Cubs' new PA guy. The Cubs' new PA announcer is not good. He's not Andrew Bellison. Andrew Bellison, who left the Cubs, he started in 2010. As a young, I think he was 25, and now he's 35, 2020. 10 years as the Cubs PA announcer. His voice fitted Wrigley Field like no other. Him, Pat Piper, Wayne Mesmer, 
were able to just absolutely... I don't know how to explain this, but Bellison's voice just floated around Wrigley. It was just purpose. Like, the organ and Andrew Bellison, like, they just, like, intertwined perfectly. It was like DNA. I mean, it just was perfectly intertwined. And it's sad to see him gone because it's just not the same. Like, just the way he's... The way he said things, like Anthony Rizzo. Hitting cleanup, the first baseman, number 44, Anthony Rizzo. And then Rizzo's not coming back. It's just 2022 Chicago Cubs are going to be a lot different than this 2021 team. We got Baez is a free agent, Rizzo's a free agent, Bryant's a free agent, Lester's already gone. Arietta has an option. Will he be back? It's just going to be a totally different vibe. Right now, our only guys under contract is Hayward, Happ, and Contreras. It's just... And Bodie. I don't like that. That's a fourth or fifth placing team right there if your lineup is Hayward, Happ, Bodie, and Contreras. Not knocking any of them, but Contreras is the best one. And Contreras is probably... I mean... Statistically, career-wise, Contreras is the worst hitter of our core four, which is Rizzo, Baez, Bryant, and Contreras, which we have right now. But anyway, if there's any way Andrew Bellison retired, I mean not retired, he left the Cubs to try to pursue a career in broadcasting, why wasn't this man doing more for Marquee? I know he was doing like promos and stuff, but why wasn't this man doing more for Marquee Sports? I mean, going to my next point, Boog Shahambi. Love Boog Shahambi. I thought he was a great pickup for Len Casper. Obviously, I'll always love Len Casper. He was the voice of the Chicago Cubs growing up. There's some amazing calls like that Aramis Ramirez walk-off back in the late 2000s. Look first, the pitch to Aramis. There's a drive. Deep left center. Cubs win. The Bryant walk off. Just High deep drive, way back. Ball game over. Cubs win. Cubs win. Oh, baby, Chris Bryant. Of just Len Casper's, just the way him and JD and Bob Brenly back in the day, uh, the chemistry there, it was just a match made in heaven. But it was sad to see him go, especially to the White Sox. The Whites and the radio job. I get his dream was to be a radio announcer, but it seems like a demotion. You're going from Chicago's team. The Chicago team. The Cubs are Chicago's team. Going to the White Sox. It seems like it's like Chicago's AAA team is the White Sox. Obviously, don't be in my comments yelling, Oh, the White Sox are so much more talented. I get that. I get that the White Sox are more talented than this Cubs roster this year. But as a fan... As a city-wide, revenue-wise, the Cubs are higher. Fan-wise, popularity, the Cubs are higher in the city. Uh, nationally, the Cubs are higher. It's just the White Sox are the Cubs' little brother in the city. Now, all these White Sox fans, just get out of here. You know it's true. You won't admit to it because we won't go there. But it's just... It's just sad to see the ruins of five years later... Our franchise is five years removed from a World Series, and we're in ruins. It's disappointing, to say the least. Very disappointing. And then Cubs offense, worse than the league right now. Our, our, our lineup is like a vending machine right now. And the Dodgers are Gibson's Steakhouse. Or the Dodgers are a five-star restaurant, and we're a vending machine. A vending machine can't compete with a five-star restaurant. A vending machine can't even compete with a McDonald's. And I would say maybe the Cardinals are a McDonald's with that great lineup of Aaron Nato. Dylan Carlson's looking good. I hate to say it, Yadier Molina. Ooh, black me on Instagram. Uh, so I, I'm not a big Yadi fan. Uh, Matt Carpenter, Paul Goldschmidt, Tommy Edmond, Paul DeYoung. That's a McDonald's lineup. I know this is making no sense, but this Cubs lineup is not good. We've had the same, I wrote about this in my blog, I'll plug the blog here in a minute, I'll plug all the socials in a minute, but we've had the same problem since 2018, and they haven't been fixed, I wrote a blog about this, I just said that, but anyway, we, 
they haven't been fixed. We haven't been able to hit with runners in scoring position. What is their average with runners in scoring position right now? I'll have, a, have it up. 152. A buck 52. 48 points below the Mendoza line. Are you kidding me? That's like Little League numbers. 152. Batting average runners in scoring position. And our strikeout rate is 300. That is an amazing average, but stri you're striking out 30% of the time? That's insane. Can we put choke up on the bat and put the ball in play? Is that too much to ask? Like, what are these hit? We've gone through three hitting coaches. Maley, Chili Davis, who is god-awful, Anthony, Anthony Iaposi. Do, do, they have, do, do they have rocks in their brain or something? W what is going on here? Why can't we get... Two out hits. Why can't we get the clutch hitting? All we can get runs far is from home runs. Is hitting the ball out of the ballpark. Good teams don't do that. 2016, we didn't get all our runs there. We played some small ball. Just, I don't know how that's hard to ask. Like, is it from the players? Is just our lineup created bad? Hap, home run strikeout guy. Contreras, Rizzo, Bryant, Jack Peterson, who I was high on. Now, very low on. Baez. We don't have any contact, guys. There's no Dexter Fowler. There's no Whit Merrifield. And I get Rizzo chokes up, but Rizzo's still a, p a power guy. Like, Hap is a speed guy, but he is popping his bat. Like, our best example, David Bodie is not, or before I was going to say Eric Sogard is our, like, our scrappy guy that we need, but he's old and he's a utility player. We have no Ben Zobrist. David Bodie... Does not deserve to be. The fact that Nico Horner isn't our starting second baseman because he's a scrappy player that can get his hits. And David Bodie, Mr. I'm not, I'm not, I don't. David Bodie's just been struggling. And I mean, obviously, hit the homer against Atlanta and the Saturday game. I think he went deep twice, but he's been struggling. He's, he's, a, he's a big home run guy. And we have, you can only have two or three home run guys on your team. Not Hap, Contreras, Rizzo, Bryant, Peterson, Baez, Boat. Not seven out of the eight guys in your lineup. Because the pitcher hits in the NL. And that might change soon. And I'm surprised Kyle Schwarber didn't go to the AL for that. But I just can't, I just can't with this team. It's just like, I said vending machine. Oh, I don't want to hurt the Iota Sumo jersey there. It's just a vending machine. And... We thought the Chicago Bears offense was bad this season with Mitch Trubisky and Allen Robinson's a lone bright spot. He's like the Chris Bryant this year. David Montgomery's also a bright spot. Kind of got the slow start, came back way. Maybe that's a Rizzo, kind of came out the slow start. But Bears couldn't score a touchdown. Cubs can't score runs. Little, same thing with the uh, Papa Bear and Lil' Cub. Everything is all in the line. They can't do anything any, anyway with that. Other points I want to talk about with the Cubs. Kyle Hendricks is very, very disappointed this year. He has definitely taken over for John Lester's first inning struggles. Let me read you a stat line of Kyle Hendricks in his three starts, the first innings. So, obviously, he's throwing three innings pitch in these. He's given up six hits, eight runs, all earned, two balls, or two, two, not, two walks, Two strikeouts, five home runs, 24 ERA, 2.67 whip. Five home runs? You, you'd think it'd be beginner mode at MLB The Show. Like, these numbers are video game laughable. Five home runs in three first innings. And, they're, and they've all been at home. At home versus Pittsburgh on opening day. At home versus Milwaukee. At home versus Atlanta on Sunday Night Baseball. Hendricks is a home pitcher. He dominates at Wrigley. What is going on with Hendricks? We have the same pitching coach, Hadavi. It's not like we changed the pitching coach. We have Hadavi. What is going on with Hendricks? I don't know if this is just an early season struggle, but he's never been this bad. Obviously, I've mentioned in uh, on my one of my live streams on TikTok, Hendricks always gives up first inning home runs. But I said that only against the Pirates. It might just be a theme now. Hendricks gives up first inning homers. He's, he's taken over John Lester with the first inning struggles. It's just like, you gotta be, you you can't miss that first inning when Hendricks, Hendricks pitches because you might be down. You might be chasing behind. You might, they did. it's just a head start for the oppo opposing team. And the Cubs are giving too much head starts because 
The bullpen is... Don't even get me started on a starting rotation. It's five of the same pitchers. Opposing teams are going to are gonna tee us up on the tee box first hole, get out their big driver, and just whack them over the nets at top golf. That's what our starting rotation is. Trevor Williams, Jake Arrieta, Zach Davies, Kyle Hendricks, Albert Alozle. They're all the same pitcher. The only... Hendricks and Davies are more alike, but Arietta, Williams, and Lozley, same pitcher. The same pitchers. And who thought it was a good idea? Was this Jed's idea? Who else, who else is it? Jason McLeod? Is Jason McLeod still running things? Or did he dip with Theo? Theo's going to be the next commissioner. We all know that. But it's just... I I'm really want to know what is going on. What is going through the minds of not only David Ross... David Ross might be the fall guy, just like they did with Madden. Joe Madden was 100% the fall guy. It was not his problem. It was the front office. Come on now. Uh, after after looking at that, it, it was 100% not Joe Madden's fault. Like, it was not Joe Madden's fault. Looking looking back at it, it was not his fault at all. I know I said that three times. But is, is that enough for my... I don't know. I'm, I should just call this the Wrigley rant of the week. Because... I was, or the, yeah, the really rant, because my rant on the Cubs is just insane. Zach Davies is below, you know what, one, one good thing, Craig Kimbrell got his 300 save, he's been looking back to what he used to be, like, when he'd get in the game, you, you would be, you wouldn't, you wouldn't be very, you didn't like him in the game, obviously, Cardinals, he blew us our chance of a postseason, Carpenter, Yachty, DeYoung, he lost, he blew two of our games down the stretch to choke us out of a postseason spot in 2019. He was a, he was just a shaky guy. I mean, obviously it's that weird thing, but like when he would go into the game in 2019, your hand would be shaking. It would be shaking. It would be like an earthquake out there. You don't know what's going to happen. It could be like a 9.2 magnitude and we could give up eight runs, or it could be like a 2.4, two runners get on, but he still gets out of it. But there was no one between Craig... Craig Kimbrell back. We love to see it. Zach Davies is a a a, a trash. She's a trash show right now. He is flaming garbage. She is... I don't know what else to say. Never get Cub... Cub killers always suck when they join the team. If you notice, Daniel Murphy, when he joined the team in 2018, never did anything special. He was a Cub killer. We all know what he did in 2015. Gary Giotti back in the day, he would he wasn't that great for the Cubs. Paul Mahalam wasn't that great when he joined, but he was a Cub killer. Lorenzo Kane, don't sign him, even though he'd be perfect, scrappy guy at the top of our order. He's in 200 plate appearance versus the Cubs. He's batted 295 with five homers, 15 RBIs, 426 slung. He absolutely pounces on the Cubs. When he goes on the calendar, his eyes light up like it's we're in a damn cartoon. And he sees the Cubs on the schedule because he kills us. He always has. He always will. That's that's all I got on the Cubs. It's just frustrating. Like, extend air, extend air. I mean, not Arietta. I mean, extend Rizzo. It's just, he's the big swinging dick at the Cracker Factory. That's what Rizzo is, as, as Dave Portnoy says. Peter Chernin, big swinging dick at the Cracker Factory. That's what Rizzo is with the Cubs. And then, all right, let's move over. Before we move over to topic two, I got we got we're gonna plug the socials. Make sure you guys follow us on TikTok, Instagram, and Twitter. All the links will be in the bio of our YouTube, or you can always find them in the link tree on our Instagram and Twitter, but and TikTok. But it's at zoomer.sports on TikTok, Instagram, Twitter. Go drop us a follow there. Make sure you hit that sub button on the YouTube. I'll be coming a lot more baseball content here. Remember, I have those guests coming on soon. I'm I'm ready to get back in the full swing of things in the podcast game on YouTube, Spotify. Make sure you follow Apple Podcast. Drop a five star review. Remember, I've already given a shout out here. If you drop a five star review and DM the Zoomer Sports account a screenshot of it, we'll we'll give you a shout out on the show. And we'll give you a shout out on the live stream. We'll give you a shout out. And once again, check out the website and blog Zoomer. I will I'll link that into the YouTube as well. Uh. Check out my blog on the frustrating frustration of the Cubs. And then once again, shout out to our international listeners. Ireland, England, Belgium, Canada, Germany. Thank you all for listening. Uh, we appreciate it. Oh, and Singapore. Singapore. We appreciate everyone 
who's out here. I assume you guys are from the TikTok, but thank you guys so much. But since we brought up the international, we got to talk about some international uh, news, <clears throat> some policy here. The European Super League that's uh, came to uh, be known is uh, it's quite mind-boggling. All right, for I'll, I'll put it in Amer- American terms here. I'm not a big soccer guy, but I'll put it into American terms here. What this Super League is for uh, those who don't know. So what they're doing is they're taking like the big twelve of soccer teams like so like the Arsenal, Chelsea, the Manchester's, Manchester City, Manchester United, Liverpool, I'm missing one Chelsea, or did I miss Tottenham Hotspur, those are six Premier League. They're taking in uh, uh FC Barcelona, uh Fuentes, um uh, I think Real Madrid's in there. I'm not taking Bayern Munich, which I don't quite get because they're one of the best teams in the world. But they're taking these. It would be like all right, here's a college football comparison for them. It would be like taking for the uh, American listeners, it'll be a college football comparison. Alabama, so say these twelve teams formed an alliance, and remember, you know, even more, these soccer players that can't play internationally in the World Cup for these Super League teams, they can't play. Oh, I just messed up the camera. My apologies for that. Uh, anyway, back at it. so they're taking like these twelve best soccer teams from La Liga, the Premier League, and they're combining them to get the Super League. That's like taking the 12 best or the 12 historically best and current college football teams and for the soccer, they can't compete internationally for like in the World Cup or the FIFA tournaments. They can't play in the Premier Leagues. They can't play for other clubs. So that'd be like taking in the college football world and NCAA football, Alabama, Clemson, Notre Dame, Ohio State, Oklahoma, USC, LSU, Florida, Texas, Texas A&M, and, and Michigan. Now, don't don't come at me for the Michigan. Michigan's been historically a good program. Don't say, oh, you should have put the U in there. Put, you should have put Nebraska in there. Just You should have put Tennessee in there. Just leave it be. I picked those 12 teams. It could be, Those could be interchangeable. But you take those teams, and you're like, all right, those, these are the teams you play. You play only these teams. You no longer play in the bowl games. You no longer play in the college football playoff. You no longer get to... I, I think you no longer get to go to the NFL. You're stuck here. And you're stuck here in this league. And it's just... It's just weird. I don't like it. I like the Premier League. I, I like to root for uh, Southampton, Nathan Redman. Uh, Chelsea I'll root for. Liverpool, they got Mo Salah. I just like to... Uh, I just like to root against the Manchesters because I feel like they have a big fan base here in America, City, and United. So I, li- I like to cheer for uh, Southampton, Chelsea, and Liverpool. And so anyway, back to it. And they can't, they can't leave. They're stuck there. Obviously, they can leave. Well, the teams once you, if you're playing for that team, you can't do what I just said. You can't leave anything. And. Manchester City and Chelsea have already pulled back and withdrawn from the Super League. So that would here that would be like Ohio State and Oklahoma or LSU anyone pulling back. And so they're leaving because they don't want to do these. They don't want these rules. I mean, I, I this is definitely not my place to talk at soccer, but I, I did say fans were protesting outside Stamford Bridge, which is the home stadium for Chelsea in London. And it this just shows how passionate European soccer fans are like like hats off to European soccer fans they show so much passion and it's insane compared to it this is what I would say compared to the USA the only two things I feel like compared to just the passion of European soccer teams like people go to jail for their soccer teams like obviously people go to jail for stupid things involving sports like running on the field in America but they like they like go crazy when they win and these fans were protesting and remember England's still in like strict COVID lockdowns and these fans were protesting getting in large gatherings and protesting outside Stamford Bridge just shows you how much football or soccer means to them in England and what the two things that compare this to me in my opinion for America is a my Chicago Cubs when they won the World Series in 2016 their World Series parade which had like, 6 million people, I don't know, was it 10 million, maybe? It was, like, the fourth most gathered event of humans in world history, and the others were, like, 
I think I, I forget what the other one. I think they were relig- the other ones were religious based, and then you just got the Cubs because they won in 108 years. It was all insane, and the other one is definitely uh the the Brady four uh the four guys who got arrested at NFL headquarters. Uh, protesting uh, Tom Brady's suspension for the Flakegate, which we know now didn't really happen. It wasn't really a thing, but those four guys were uh, Barstool Sports employees, Dave Portnoy, Feidelberg. Feidel, shout out uh, KFC and uh, Feidelberg. KFC Radio likes some of my TikToks, so shout out to KFC Radio. Hank Lockwood, the producer of Pardon My Take with Big Cat, and then Gaz who works at uh, Barstool, and they were all arrested at NFL headquarters, and it was a big thing about him. Brady was talking about it. That's a big thing, and then hopefully this falls through. It's on life support already, and hopefully this Super League just falls through because I don't really want to see the Premier League best teams be like just like the cream of the crop, be Leicester City, Leeds United, um, Southampton, Crystal Palace, Sheffield, uh, I think Sheffield. Uh, and this shows just how little soccer knowledge I have, but that's just my opinion. Moving on. This is probably my favorite topic of the day because this one doesn't frustrate. This one doesn't frustrate me like the Chicago Cubs frustrate me. And the Chicago Cubs are the most frustrating franchise of all the time. Besides maybe New York Jets and New York Mets. Sorry, Kevin Clancy. But anyway... Illinois basketball, we got huge news right here. I got the Adam Miller and Iota Sumu jerseys up. Obviously, first of all, Florida center Omar Payne is coming to Champaign. I'm pumped. He'll replace Kofi and Georgie Bish- Georgie Vili. We'll get to him. He'll be right now. He'll be replacing Georgie Vili and Kofi Coburn along with Coleman and him and Coleman Hawkins will take their shoes. And then the man, the myth, the legend is returning for year five. Trent Frazier's coming back to the State Farm Center. And that will be exciting. Him and Andre Cabello are certainly a special one and two guard there. Iota Sumu, uh, I think Brad Underwood said, stated in uh, this to uh, last night at uh, the banner. They got their banner revealed at the Illinois Orange and Blue Spring football game. The whole team is there. Kofi, Io. I don't know if Adam Miller was there for sure, but we'll get to him in a second. They were all there. They got their banner. They got their balls, like the Big Ten champions, like those basketballs they make. And Brad Underwood uh, went on quote saying, this man right here, uh, Jet Boy 11, uh, everyday guy, Iota Sumu, his number 11 will be hanging in the rafters at the State Farm Center down in Champaign, getting retired. And I think he deserves it. I mean... What what he was he averaged twenty points his senior year. He led us to a, our first Big Ten championship since we had guys named Luther Head, D Brown, and James Augustine, Darren Williams running our court. So he he deserves it. I mean he was he won the USA Today National Player. He got snubbed for Big Ten Player of the Year by Luca Garza. Don't give me don't get me into that. But you know yeah we gotta throw on the line I had here. Uh, Illini, and he did all this, and he really, he really got Illinois basketball back on the map, and it's just, I mean, it was obviously sad to see the way we lost to Loyola, I mean, of all teams, Sister Jean and Loyola, I just, it, 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 I thought we had a real shot to win it all, we definitely had the hardest one, one seed route. Compared to anyone, we would have we would have beaten UCLA if we were in Michigan spot. We would have beaten UCLA, but it's just a shame. It was sad to see just our season in that way. And then Io definitely deserves it. Well, it was the article said he was he's one of the three Big Ten players to average a triple double, not a triple a double double. I forget it was Magic Johnson and one other. The article by Marlene Weirda on uh. WCIA down in Champaign. Uh, said he, yeah, he was the only, yeah, not double, double, my bad. He was the only NCAA, the only NCAA player. Oh my God, I can't speak. He was the only NCAA player over the last 11 seasons to average at least 20 points, six rebounds, and five assists. And he joins NBA great Magic Johnson and as only two players in Big Ten history. So just Magic Johnson, no other guy. 
as the only players in Big Ten history with multiple triple double triple doubles in league play. I barely I was limping through that, barely getting through my sentence. So, hats off to Ida Sumo. He 100% deserves his number retired. Kofi, I deserve. I think Kofi deserves to get his jersey honored. May not retired, but I don't think anyone really gets their jersey retired. Like, like Carbello, Carbello's five. Darren Williams is five. Like, I don't think anyone gets their uh, jersey retired. I think they just get it honored. Like Kofi, I think Kofi could get his jersey. Uh, yeah, Co- Carbello wears five, or was Williams eight? I don't. That's gonna bug me. I'm gonna look that up. Number Illinois. Darren Williams was five. Yeah, so I was right. So, yeah, no, I think he's just going to get honored. I think in that place, Kofi might be. He was on that Big Ten team. Carbello's on a path, obviously, to do that. And then, obviously, we got that kid from Wisconsin. He just committed. So, we got another We got another uh, kid from Puerto Rico coming up. Haven't totally looked into them, but uh, we'll definitely have to research them coming soon. And then, Georgie going to the NBA draft, he declared. Georgie was our seventh man. He didn't start. There were six guys better on the team than him. How is he going to get drafted? Like, I, I can understand if he's going to play back in Europe, but why isn't he staying for a senior season? That I don't get. I think he will be coming back on that one. I think he will be. Uh, Adam Miller. Obviously, am I upset Adam Miller isn't coming back for his... Am I upset Adam Miller isn't coming back for a sophomore year in Champaign-Urbana? Yes. Do I respect this decision? Yes. And then shout out to his cousins came on the podcast, DJ Richardson. But the amount of hate Adam Miller got on Twitter that night was uncalled for. It, it, he did not deserve it. I mean, he's a kid. He's, I mean, I feel like saying he's like two years older than me. He's what, 19, 20? And I mean, he's the same age as me. Like, he doesn't deserve that. He, he's like, in order, like, Kentucky's getting rumored out now that where he might go. He thinks he can a- accelerate his game at a different program, and that that leads you to uh, to think, is uh, is there something Brad Underwood, because Brad Underwood has now lost four guys to transfers. Sam Kane back in Trent, I think that was Trent Frazier's or Io DeSumo's rookie year. Alan Griffin, well, no, before Alan Griffin, Mark Smith, another Illinois Mr. Basketball, transferred to Mizzou, but I don't know about that one. He just transferred to K-State, this third school. He might, he might be like a clubhouse cancer type of dude. And then... Alan Griffin, who was like best friends of Trent Frazier, his TikToks are actually pretty funny. And then now Adam Miller, who's the biggest name out of them all. And it makes you wonder, is there something going on with, uh, I don't think there is, but four transfers, it, it doesn't look great, but we got Omar Payne coming in. Hopefully we got some other ones coming in, so that will be great. We've had Jacob Grandison, he looked great, oh, I'm saying great a lot, he looked he was outstanding and played way above all expectations for uh, Illinois this season. He when Illinois started, they only lost they lost two games after Grandison started. Will Demonte Williams come back? I don't know. I thought Demonte would have been more likely to come back over Trent Frazier. Demonte could very well come back, but I don't know. He might he might be gone. So definitely different. Different team next year. I think we'll be around a 20-ranked team the whole year. I don't think we'll be a one seed. But, hey, Curbelo, Coleman, Omar Payne, they could all really, really get good because we'll probably have a normal training camp, more normal training camp this summer for basketball, and that will help the development of all these guys. That's why I feel like the Dukes, the North Carolinas, the Kentuckys of the world weren't that good this year. They didn't have the... Full Coach K, Roy Williams, John Calipari experience. Obviously, Roy Williams is gone. Hubert Davis has taken over that program. I think Hubert Davis will be a great coach. He was Roy Williams' assistant for, I think, the last 10 years at least. But anyway, moving on from Illinois basketball. It, that, that, topic, that, that topic didn't bug me. Obviously, I wish Adam Miller was staying. He's not, but I think we have a bright future ahead of us. And then going to the Masters, uh... Congrats, Hideki Matsuyama on winning. It's kind of a, it's kind of a chalk. It was kind of a chalky uh, Masters. It wasn't very exciting Sunday. It was pretty much Matsuyama. Obviously, it got within. I think it got within one or two shots. But it, like, no one really had a real shot at it besides Will's out. Will uh, Will's out Taurus. We'll get to him in a second. The funny Adam Sandler. But 
Hideki just dominated Augusta. Not as much as uh, Dustin Johnson did when he shot uh, minus, I think he shot minus 20 or minus 19 in November. But Augusta was like, the Augusta National was like, we're not having another minus 20. I think the winner was going to be between minus 9 and minus 12, according to, uh, shout out Brandon Webb uh, from the Stoolies Clubhouse uh, for coming up with that one. Brandon Webb, great, uh, great golf uh, insider there. And he predicted that well. The greens were fast at Augusta. But Will Zaltoris made a name for himself this week at Augusta. He will be a guy to watch out in the future. Adam, when Adam Sandler tweets about you, I think you've won life. Adam Sandler, one of the funniest comedic, comedic af- actors of all time. He's up there with Will Ferrell. He might be number one. I think him and Will Ferrell will have to box that one out for number one. But Will Zaltoris, he looks like he looked like the caddy from Happy Gilmore. I'll give that one to Adam. That, that was that was a funny one. And then. John Romp, well, Will Zaltoris, he was on part of my take the other day. He just, he seems like a bright kid, and I think he'll be a household name on the tour very soon. I think he'll win a couple tournaments before this year's over. I really do. He'll be a household name by the end of the year, PJ Tour. Granted, I did say the same thing about Cameron Champ. Cameron Champ, as, as he's kind of disappointed, but anyway, golf's not my main topic. Uh, John Rom, he was my guy. He's always the guy I pick to win a major ever since I met him in Hawaii and watched the end of a Warriors Rockets game at a restaurant with him in Maui, Hawaii at the Century Tournament of Champions. So he's always been my guy ever since. Still looking for that first major. He was even throughout uh, the first three days, I believe, where he's one plus, but shot a great uh, 66 on Sunday, minus six. So obviously John Rahm, great, uh, great future too. I think he can definitely win a tournament yeah, well, he wins tournaments every year I think he definitely win a major within the next three years hope he does and then moving on to the NFL draft moving into the NFL draft now obviously we know the first picks Trevor Lawrence he's going to Jacksonville but it gets who's gonna go where this Jets 49ers and Falcons picks I mean if Panay if Penny Sewell drops to uh, if he drops to the Bengals, just Joe Burrow will be very happy. He will he's getting the best lineman in the draft, and that is absolute steal for the Bengals. So they're hoping he definitely uh Pen Pen Sewell will drop all the way, and then so talking about the quarterbacks, when did Mac Jones all of a sudden become a top three pick? I I get you on the championship and all, but he was nowhere near. He was like late first round during the season, like. He just like, came up with all, all, all of a sudden. I mean, I don't think Belichick's very happy with him, but Belichick's not going up. Zach, I think it's all pretty much known. Like throughout the season, it was Lawrence one, Fields two, Zach Wilson two. I think it's pretty much a well-known fact. Zach Wilson will go two overall. I think the Jets they traded Sam Darnold for him, and they traded Sam Darnold so they can take him to the. They traded him to the Panthers, but I think it's a done deal that it's it's Zach Wilson. But that third pick. Is it Trey Lance? Is it Justin Fields? Mac Jones? I feel like Mac Jones is too early. I say, I'm not a football analyst. It's not my it's not my expertise. Definitely ba- more baseball, college basketball. But I just don't get why do people not like Justin Fields? He's agile. He's he's all, I guess you maybe get the arm, but Mac Jones. I, I I would take my chance with Justin Fields. But hey, if uh. It's projected he goes to the Panthers with the eighth pick. If the Panthers get Fields at the eight, I would I think they'll be happy with that. And then, what? Why is Devontae Smith so far down now? For the whole time, it was Devontae Smith. It was Devontae Smith, Jamar Chase. Devontae Smith, Jamar Chase. Jamar Chase didn't even play this season. Devontae Smith is the damn Heisman winner. Like I get the Heisman winners haven't done well, but Devontae Smith is a different breed. I mean. He makes quarterbacks look silly. Granted, it's college competition. He's not. Go- He's facing no Jalen Ramseys or Marlon Humphreys and Patrick Petersons during this uh, in college. But man, I Jalen Waddle. He's not even the best wide receiver on this team. I mean, I guess they like him. Uh, his ankle's fully healed. I mean, reading Peter Schrager's mock draft, he doesn't really say. Obviously, 
Jamar Chase was great with Joe Burrow, and that whole team sat out this year. Hopefully that doesn't affect him in season playing a whole year. And then Kyle Pitts coming up number four. I've always been a big Kyle Pitts fan. I, I've liked him. He was great with uh, Kyle Trask. That's such an unfortunate name, Kyle Trask. Like, if he's bad, you're just going to be known as Kyle Trash. It's like Butt Fumble Sanchez. Like, he's going to have that bad name associated with him. So, that that's just an L for him. But, I, I'm I'm, I'm going to stay brief on the NFL draft coverage because I think uh, Pat and I will probably do something bigger for the draft next week. So, I think I'm going to wrap it up. It was a great first show for not doing a show in two months. So, guys, thank you for listening and watching. Whatever you've been doing, uh, I thank you for uh, stopping by on Zoomer Sports. Uh, make sure, make sure you s- check out the TikTok. I I just had a TikTok go viral about uh, the GR, not the Giolito, the Rodon no hitter. So make sure you go check that out. My TikTok at Zoomer Sports. Drop a follow there. Drop a follow on our Instagram and Twitter. Twitter we only have thirteen followers. We don't really tweet out of there, but drop a follow so we will tweet out there. And then yeah, follow our Instagram. Slowly growing, slowly but surely, we're growing. We're uh, growing our numbers and impressions. And uh, I, I thank you. I can't thank you enough for everyone who listens. Make sure you go read my blog. We have another blog. We have a New Yorker uh, who runs Zoomer. Uh, I guess you call it Zoomer New York. Uh, he, he writes in the blog. Uh, AJ Lewicki. So go go uh, check out that blog there. Link in the description. But thank you guys. Make sure you. Uh, Hit the pl- or hit the subscribe button, uh, notifications. Follow on Spotify, five star on Apple review or on Apple uh, podcast. Make sure you leave a five star. Remember, send us the DM or send us a DM on the Zoomer Sports Instagram of a screenshot of your five star review. I'll give you a shout out on the podcast. Give your Instagram a shout out, whatever you want. But thank you guys so much for watching, listening. This has been episode thirty five. Let's get out of here. <laughs>